Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have the mic? Uh, it's right there in front of Ted. Oh, okay. Uh, welcome to Wednesday, April 18th, uh, County Commissioner's uh, Board Meeting. Commissioner Lori Kukowski has a very energetic uh, little dog here. So She is a riot. She has so much fun. She's got a lot of energy. A uh, little pug we have from the dog kennel. She's about three years old. Uh, as you can see, she uh, would love to go home with someone. She's got a lot of energy. Needs to go for a walk, run around the yard. Um, come down to our dog pound. We have 25 dogs to pick from besides her. And we need your help on getting them adopted. So if you can come down, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Under presentations at 11 o'clock, the performance audit has been canceled due to the president coming today and the commissioners have to be there by noon. Under public hearings, 1115 will be our special purpose flood damage reduction resolution. 1130 will be the Cherry Hill Drive Amherst Township vacation. Resolutions, job and family services bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. No advances, no repayments, requisitions. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Travel. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Under the commissioners, authorized various personnel actions and indicated on the summary sheet for employees within jurisdiction of county commissioners. Mr. Cordes. I think we'll forego any <laughs> necessary work under this until next week. Thank I you. I was hoping you would say that. Thank you. Authorized a thousand dollar payment to Boyer and Cool Home for funerals. Lorraine for Lee T. Wellsler, Senior Lorraine, an indigent veterans in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code 5901. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Authorize various payments for permanent and temporary markers for graves of veterans in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code 5901.34, $1,984.60 to Rest Haven Memorial Garden Avon for Robert L. Rimes Lorraine, $390 to Ridge Hill Memorial Park Associates, Amherst for Charles B. Barnett, Elyria. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Men Resolution 10764 on November 3rd, 2010, approving agreement with CT Consultants for administration and implementation of CHIP FY10 grant. Said amendment is to reflect the correct account professional services, not contract services. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Men Resolution 11467 on July 20th, 2011. Approve an agreement with CT Consultants to design, prepare bid specs, inspect, and assist in the management of installation of new sanitary sewer line along Albany Avenue, Sheffield Township. Said amendments to reflect the correct account number should be professional services, not Sheffield Township <coughs> sewer. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. 
Solid Waste, Men Resolution 11, 823, adopted December 21st, 2011, extending contract with Liberty Tire Recycling, LLC, Minerva for Scrap Tire Processing and Recycling Services during 2012. <coughs> Amendment is to reflect the account number should have been Recycle Ohio, not Tire Open Dump. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Under TB, approve and enter an agreement with Community Health Partners Regional Medical Center, DBA Mercy, in the amount of Three hundred twenty thousand for treatment of tuberculosis. This agreement is effective retroactive to February first, two thousand twelve, through December thirty first, two thousand thirteen. So moved. Second. Discussion. Commissioners, Ma Teresa, do we have that uh, language in there about uh, the TV board and Dissolve. the designation? Yes. Okay, just just so the commissioners are clarified, uh, as part of that resolution. Uh, we have to designate Mercy as the control unit, uh, and at the same time, we have to, uh, although I'm not sure under the law, we have to officially do it uh, uh, to clean things up. We would dissolve the TB board since the clinic is in, ex in existence, and uh, the Board of Commissioners would take over uh, management and control of the TB uh, levy funds. So that's all part of that resolution. Okay, and mm -hmm. we've already notified the board members in writing, or do we, that they're no longer needed? I believe that they had all expired. They expired? Yeah, I think. All but one, I think. Mm -hmm. You know? <coughs> I don't like assuming things, but I would assume since the, uh, the TB clinic was closed at the end of February uh, and the board oversaw the TB clinic, that uh, they understood that they no no longer were in existence, but you know we can certainly send them a, a thank you, a thank, for you, your you know, thank you your thank you correspondence and and for their uh, time of service and letting them know that we've concluded all the official business necessary to resolve any outstanding issues with regards to the board. That would be good. That would be my suggestion. Okay. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. All right. Under the engineer, approve MOU with commissioners, engineer in Sheffield Village for the acquisition of right of ways on State Route 301 to 1.5 Abbey Road. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Accept and journalize 2011 report on bridges for Lorain County. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Award contract coasting construction company Inc. Leary in the amount of $2,610,646.08. For station road resurfacing project. Four bids were open on April 10th, this being the most responsive complying with specifications. Could coasting agrees to complete by November 30th will be paid 80% federal and 20% OPWC. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalen. Aye. Under the sheriff, approval and renewal agreement with Columbia Township for additional police protection at a cost of $26.66 per hour and 50 cents per mile effective retroactive of April 1st 2012 through March 31st 2016 so moved second discussion Ms. Kowski aye Mr. Williams aye Mr. Kalo. aye Mr. Cortez County Minister thank you uh, I know we have a short day today there you go it's gonna be an amazing two days I got to see the boss last night uh, mm -hmm. at the queue and I get to see the commander-in-chief today so I think those are two kind of perfect days. Uh, so I know we have a pressing schedule. Uh, hopefully uh, President Obama's visit here uh, specifically to address workforce development issues and, and the WEA Reinvestment Act is going to be very productive. I'm, I'm glad he's here to hear the concerns locally as uh, we transition the state with uh, regard to how we deliver our services to our businesses and residents here. So I have to say this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Reynolds, Assistant County Prosecutor. I have no report this morning. Commissioner's report. I have no report. Uh, that was quick. Well, well, we have four or five minutes before yeah. we get to the next meeting. Oh, okay. Problem. We're stuck. You sure you don't <laughs> want to say mm. something? Um, actually, I didn't bring my agenda with me, so I, I did so many things. I, well, yeah, I did. <laughs> I should. You might spark something as we go okay. along. But. Uh, Friday morning, Commissioner Williams and I attended NOACA. Uh, we are going forward. We selected a candidate uh, to replace retiring Howard Mayor. We are currently in negotiations on a contract for that person, so I hope that goes well. Uh, congratulations, everyone who made it through the Tough Mudder. Mm -hmm. Big turnout for uh, Lorraine County, a ton of people here. Wish we would have benefited the village more. Huh? A thousand buses go past my house on Oak Point Road 
I'm like, what are all these buses? And I'm like, oh, that's the Tough Mudder going on. Really? Oh, gosh. I don't know where they were hauling them from, but thousands of, like, school buses. They found them in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> I believe they're at the old IRG. Is where they parked at. That where they were yeah. parking and bringing them up, so. I don't know what they were doing on Oak Point, but there was thousands. Sorry. Maybe ahead. they brought them back around the other side to Quarry Road. Who knows? Mm -hmm. To get them out there. Because I know they shut down part of Quarry Road for it. Uh, Sheffield Township Fire had a very nice uh, steak Friday or night pack with people. Nice to talk with everyone. Uh, got hit up with people who were concerned about the jobs in Lorain County. As I explained to one lady that we have plenty of jobs working on skilled workers and the presence coming in. And a lady who was sitting right next to her said, yeah, we can't find enough good welders. I said, that's my story. We don't have enough of the qualified welders for our workforce. So, And a lady who filed an issue with the Clinton Road ditch that will be coming up to the SWAC. I guess Sheffield Township's going to submit a, com she's got all kinds of trees down on it or something. Chad Parsons, the Sheffield Township trustee and this resident was telling Did me Did they about submit it. for a grant for that uh, project in the last, well, we're, we're in current round of grants. So. I believe they're submitting it now, so I'm not sure where they're at on it. Okay, great. Uh, met with uh, Nord Center on Monday morning. They are working on projects. They received two grants, one for $3,000 here at their Lorraine Center and one out in Wellington to develop a wellness track. They're looking for whatever government input and or help to finance putting in you know, doing some of the demolition. I was going to send it over to Ken Carney, see if anybody was in the area, and referred it to Mayor Rittenauer. Um, also met with uh, our county treasurer on Monday, Mayor Brenda and Mayor Rittenauer, about the ongoings of our land bank, which we hope to have together by next week's agenda. They were actually having their Mayors and Managers Association this morning with uh, Jim Rokakis, who's leading that charge, the former Cuyahoga County treasurer. Um, what else do we have? I have CCO written down for something. Oh, also today when we go to see the president, I've got a copy of the white paper that the Commissioners Association has been using. We spent a year studying, working with job and family services people, economic development directors, one-stop directors on ways to improve the outgoing of funds in regards to, you know, local preference, where we can best use those dollars at. Uh, so I hope to present it to one of the staff of the president so we can see what Ohio's thinking about from the commissioner's standpoint. Wait, what else? There was something else on there, but I can't remember. Yesterday, Go ahead, because, going huh? to tour um, Cherry Hill. Oh, we did, we did Cherry Hill yesterday. vacation. Oh, also, I'd like to thank Representative Lundy and Representative Ramos from the plan I introduced last year that the board agreed on uh, to endorse to return local dollars here. Representative Lundy sits on the budget committee as they're going through the mid biennial review and tried to submit some of the language to return local government dollars back here. It was soundly not allowed into the bill, so it doesn't look like we're going to move forward at that currently. Are you surprised? No, but <laughs> to get more local government dollars, but I'll give uh, Representative Lundy credit for pushing it. So which more of the state reps would realize how important local government is to our citizens. Mm -hmm. The closer you are to the ground, the more important the decisions you make and the dollars you use affect people directly. For End sure. of my report. Yeah. Mr. Williams? I agree with you on that. Uh, definitely local government is important. People need to pay attention to what's going on. Um, first, I want to thank everyone that did call me. I had a uh, phone was ringing off the hook uh, last week and even over on the weekend. I um, just want to thank everyone that did call. I had over 103 calls that came in. Uh, so thank you for taking the time to call me. Um, met with on Saturday. Uh, the Auditor of State, Mr. Yost, uh, he's looking forward to coming in and presenting. Um, unfortunately, with, or fortunately, with the President coming in, we can't uh, <laughs> do that for him. So um, he will be rearranging it in a time to come in, probably uh, early May. Uh, then I met with uh, Congressman uh, Bob Gibbs to kind of give him an update what's going on in Lorain County, what we could use uh, from his expertise. and. Um, Kind of just went on with the other projects that I'm working on uh, with the drone planes, trying to get that located here. And uh, good feedback from him. Friday after NOAC, I met with a company in Cleveland trying to figure out uh, how interested they are coming in here to Lorain County. So uh, we have another meeting coming up, and I'll be bringing in a couple congressmen on a uh, April 30th meeting for that. So good things happening. Uh, hopefully they will get executed though. So, mm -hmm. end of my report. Um, next Tuesday at 11 is our IAC meeting. 
Okay, board correspondence? I move the reading be waived. Excuse me, at a, next Wednesday at 11? Next Tuesday at 11. I'm sorry, I thought you said Wednesday. Okay, Tuesday. sorry, 11, right. Yes. Second. Second. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Do we want to take any public comment right now? Yeah, we have one more minute. What was the reminder for yesterday? The what? I'm sorry. I mean, what was the reminder for the last thing you just said? I'm sorry. IAC. Investment Advisory Committee meeting is next Tuesday at 11. So we advisory, advisory committee. committee. Hi. Commissioners, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Tim Luby from the uh, Common Police Court General Division. Um, I was, I'm here to request your perhaps assistance in, um, is that better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm here to uh, ask for your assistance. As you may recall, back in July or August of last year, we put our PSI department in the old Columbia Gas Building. There was um, some discussions at that time about that space and its, its uh, eventual use by perhaps the coroner's office. Um, so ultimately, the upper floor of that building was not made available to us. We subsequently, in the winter time, had that fire, making that space not available. It's now been repaired. Um, I'm here today to ask for your consideration of, of allowing us to use, again, that's not the ideal space for our use, but um, we have people that are all crammed right now in a physical area that they're not able to do their job effectively. So if we could have access to that uh, upper floor while it's not being utilized, we could do our job a little bit more effectively. Did the state ever decide whether they were going to give us rent monies for they that? They have not. Uh, we are in negotiations right now with the state to try to get some additional personnel, and as part of that, we're going to be asking for rent. Um, the state doesn't move fast, so I expect that those will be protracted discussions, but that is something we will be asking for um, for next year. Is this something that we should have uh, Karen Davis look I think we should wait until we get some rent from the state. Yeah. They dumped this on us. Uh, they didn't give us any, any ability to pay for uh, indirect cost or housing cost or bill cost, and uh, I think spreading out into more spaces until they come to the table with some resources. Uh, this is something they used to pay for. This is another way of balancing the damn state budget on the back of local government. So I know the space, we've cleaned it, and I understand the need up there, uh, Tim, and obviously, uh, you know, the, the environment they're in, but the, the state has some, some responsibility here. And giving them more when they haven't even paid for what they got, I don't think is the real answer. All right, I think currently that space, Tim, just... I mean, we still haven't made a decision what we're doing with the corner and or anything else, and we've got the Bar Association looking for space. And I mean, I just don't think currently to expand something that we're not recouping any of our costs on. I think the last time I looked, the state was projecting a surplus. They already are. They've got over $250 million. And, and I think they, can, they, can, they can give a couple of shekels to Lorraine County for <laughs> and, some And believe me, space. Jim, I, I do appreciate that sentiment. That's actually some of, of a similar sentiment that I've uh, had expressed to me by the judges. The dilemma is the state does what the state does and there's a consequence to us, to us locally should we not make that department more efficient and I'll tell you exactly a good example um, right now ideally that department should be producing reports for the judges within 30 days and what a PSI uh, report is if a defendant is sentenced mm -hmm. before the judges can do or if a defendant pleads guilty before the judges can do anything with that individual um, if they're an F4 or F5 uh, offense those individuals have to have a PSI re report done in the interim while they're not being sentenced they're out in our community so we have a felon that's out in our community if they are going to be placed on probation they will be supervised they're not on probation right now they are out in our community unsupervised ideally we would like those reports done in 30 days they're not being done in 30 days now we're at 60 days and more so that, and we've had a number of, and, and the prosecutor's office can tell you, while these, these individuals are out in our community, unsupervised, they're reoffending because in reality, they've committed offense, they've gone through our court system, and they've seen no adjudication. They've seen no consequence for their behavior. And so these individuals are going out, reoffending, committing more offenses, and we still then start that process all over again. We can't sentence them again because they've now picked up more offenses, and we start the process all over again and our citizens are being impacted locally. So, so they Jim, have to go back to misdemeanors or be F1, 2s, or 3s not to use a PSI? Absolutely. Yeah, right now there was, as you may recall, there was a change under Senate Bill 86 that requires That's judges right have no discretion. That's right if it's an F4 Thank or you. F5, 
we have to do a PSI and we have to see if we can put these individuals in some kind of less um, stringent other than prison. So the, 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 the impact to us locally with this department not being at their absolute, I think that's me, I apologize, um, with these individuals not being at their absolute um, most efficient is that um, individuals are out in our community unsupervised picking up new offenses and, and um, impacting our local citizens. Well, is, it a, is it a space <coughs> issue or a personnel issue? That's what issue? I was going to say. It's both. Same well, here, here's one of issue. We have about four or five individuals. Sure. We have one little off, open office area um, that's not even big enough to really put cubicles. And so these individuals, their responsibility is to uh, be on the phone conducting interviews and calling research together. And while they're doing that, they're in this tiny little area, and if they're talking, they're being disruptive to the other people. So from a physical space perspective, it's not ideal. They're not able to conduct interviews and do these things like they would at least if they had more offices upstairs. We still, even once that's done, that may give us, bring our days from 60 days maybe down to 45 days. Mm -hmm. We still need to go back to the state and say, we need more people. Well, they laid off, what, 14 or 15 gave us funding for six? Yes. To do the same job in Lorain County? Yeah. From a, uh, I mean, I'm looking at the statistics and it's offensive. I mean, the state had probably four times the amount of resources in both personnel and dollars being applied to this compared to what we currently have. And again, the state does what the state wants to do and we can only um, conjole and ask so much, but at the end of the day, if they don't give us those dollars, they don't give us those dollars. Well, the problem being, Tim, though, is our residents don't want to give us those dollars either. Ooh, you're exactly no right, services, So we're kind of stuck. If I could ask this, if we could ask what, until that space, we, we would not ask for permanent use of that space. If you have a, an immediate need to utilize it, fine, we'll pull our people back downstairs. But at least until the point that it is being used, if we can temporarily put them upstairs with laptops, we can pull them down in a day. If what that's about, something you would consider. What about the old courthouse? Putting them in there, we got plenty of space there. I don't know where you'd put them. Oh, second floor is, uh, is open. Actually, can we um, take this into consideration and, sure. and think about it? Yeah, uh, we have meeting. a time restraint Absolutely. today, Commissioner. and we have to get on to our uh, public hearing. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question, the coroner, has he responded yet? We played a little bit of phone tag with the coroner uh, with regard to that. So, okay. well, we we can we can talk about it. There's no nothing has been put in concrete yet. Okay. Okay, Madam Clerk. Well, we have one more um, person. No, we don't. That's Kristen Brandy. She works oh, for us. I'm sorry. We have our public hearing for the special purpose flood damage reduction. Kristen Brandon. Hi, morning. good morning, commissioners. I'm here before you today because the Ohio Department of Natural Resources has sent a request to us for us to update section 6.3 of our special flood ha prevention resolution, which is the violations and penalties section of our resolution. There are basically three changes that they have requested to this section. The first would class would uh, remove the classification as a minor misdemeanor. Now it will be a strict liability offense. It'll cap the fine of violation at $300 per day of offense. And a statement has been added to provide for the recoupment of court costs and expenses involved in a case. So those are the basic changes to the resolution and uh, we're requesting at this time to make those changes. And do we open it up to the public or? Yeah, you can open it up to the public, but we have our second public hearing next yes. yeah. Wednesday, so we don't officially do anything until next okay. week, but you can mm -hmm. open it up if anybody wants. To. If anybody has a comment or a question regarding this issue, you can step forward. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Gallo. Aye. And next one is scheduled next. Wednesday at 11 yeah. 15. Thanks so much. Thank you. We have five minutes. We have five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to read it or? Well, I can't read it. Until can't read till 11 30. It's a I public can't do meeting. Advertise. Yeah. Oh. Well, um, anybody else public comment? <laughs> <laughs> I got a call from the Bar Association. They wanted to know about the fifth floor. I know where you stand. Right. I was just wondering where you were. I thought they were going to look at other space. They were interested in the fifth floor in the uh, the chambers area, and um, so. Hmm. I got a call from 
Frank Dottilio stating that uh, she had called him and apologized because didn't realize she was going to be moving someone out of space in order to obtain space. Like, I kind of got the impression that she. Well, they just wanted to know out. where where we stood on it, um, because if not, then they're gonna they got to go forward and um, look at getting a different spot. Uh, Tim, I know you're part of the bar association. Um, they had a meeting last Wednesday, I believe, with the group. Um, we put on a different hat. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, they did, and we are, st I would say, here's how I would couch it, is the Bar Association is still absolutely interested in space that the commissioners would have available for us. We are, uh, are cautious and do not want to be involved in uh, pushing other individuals out of that space. So I think it's absolutely accurate that um, what the um, uh, director did in, in calling um, uh, Mr. Dottilio and saying, look, we, we don't want to be the impetus for pushing people out. That's ultimately the commissioner's decision. Right. And if you have space that will meet our needs and we can come to an agreement on that space, absolutely we would like to just have discussions on that. In the interim, if, if that shouldn't come to pass, we still have to move forward with finding space for ourselves. Did you happen to come up with the amount of money in your committee on what you're willing to look at for rent? Because um, that was a discussion last week we hadn't heard. I, it would be based in on a, your square footage. We absolutely do have uh, funds available, but uh, it, here's how I would couch it in the sense of uh, because I do represent the bar association sure. too. Uh, I would not disclose that if okay. if you have a space and you have um, rent that you think is uh, the optimum amount that. for that, okay. we would enter into negotiations. Absolutely. I think we need to come up with an area to show them so they can see. If it one meets all the requirements and two what they're willing to pay do you, for it, will you have people coming in and out, um, or is it mostly just for the attorneys to do business? I would say that we do have the public that utilizes it. Wouldn't have any necessity to use it in probably um, non-business hours. Um, I don't honestly know how often the public frequents our offices. Um, they do, and we have to. Um, in order because our compliance with the Ohio State Bar Association or the Supreme Court um, have an available space for the public to come mm -hmm. in but I don't think we have that high of a traffic if that mm -hmm. answers your question okay but yeah. there is on occasion okay. oh, you want to think about well it, I would like for them to see that did you did you we've look never at seen the that other space. side oh. of the of the upstairs on the fifth floor they the opposite the, end where all the empty offices are they've seen that the issue is is getting them a lobby and that and what i'm looking at is just coming up with the way where it's not going to cost us anything right where if they go into the um, other end it's going to cost us with renovations in well, order to meet the requirements be careful now also with the land bank coming up i anticipate that there's going to be three or four people okay with the land bank when that's up and running that are going to be needing space, space to run yeah. the land bank and and that's small compared to what some other counties have done uh, with regard to that work I, i'm not trying to get into where people should be i'm just indicating that sbdc uh, uh went on a circuit rider so there's some office space available at that end of the hall right. but th there's going to be the need to have the land bank and interact with, with the public and have office space and so forth. yeah we, we have 18 vacant offices up there so well, Space I'm talking, is an issue. I'm talking about with with uh, hall appeal, so to speak. Right. The the um, and uh, clearly the land bank will have the ability to pay for that space. Right. So we'll be able to recapture our cost uh, for housing uh, those folks and 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 doing what we're going to do with the land bank. Right. I just actually, wanted to add that in. While right. They'll actually discussion. be in the secured section of it. They don't need to have a lobby or anything. They're just workers. Um, where, again, the chamber, we can put them in with Team Lorraine County and utilize a county employee who's the receptionist right now. So, which they don't have a uh, receptionist, full-time receptionist at the chamber. But I know, we, well, we're getting close to 1130. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so we, uh, and on behalf of the bar, we are very interested and remain interested in, in discussions with the commissioners, okay. but ultimately I would submit to you that the the uh, ball is in your court to come to us and say we have this space available we think it might meet your needs so thank you commissioner thank you okay, okay. 
Uh, today's public hearing for the vacation request to Cherry Hill Drive, Amherst Township. Request received from Amherst Township trustees in March 8, 2012 to vacate the undedicated right of way known as Cherry Hill Drive in accordance with the Ohio Re Revised Code 5553.045. March 8, the engineer accepted <coughs> Township Resolution 2212 to vacate Cherry Hill Drive. Commissioner's Resolution 12217, March 28th, received and generalized petition request. Schedule the viewing for yesterday, April 17th at 930, and hearing for today. Under Ohio Revised Code 5553.05, there is no provisions to notify the utility companies or ODNR, and no advertisement was necessary. March 30th, notification went to seven property owners for nine lots. Bless you. Um, Jerry, do you want to swear in anyone will, uh, wishing to give testimony? Anybody who anticipates they're going to have testimony to give, I'll ask that you be sworn, stand and be sworn in. To each of you swear or affirm the testimony that you shall give shall be the truth as you shall answer unto God or under penalty of the law of perjury. Um, is there anyone from the engineer's office that would like to make any comments? Do we have to go through all that? Yeah. We do? Uh, yeah. Unless they want to. They well, I don't know if we to. need to. It was pretty much decided. Okay. Right. They, unless, unless they want continue to. Continue okay. this. Just get them on the record. We, yeah, you need to get everything okay. on the record and then go from there. All right. Come on up, Wayne, please. We all met out uh, at Cherry Hill yesterday, all three commissioners, the engineers, the property owners, and we got to uh, an agreement of how we might be able to um, make this happen to everyone's satisfaction. So, Wayne, if you want to give us a breakdown real quick on what we're planning on doing. I, I think after the, uh, the talk yesterday was there was going to be a split among the, the basis of the uh, uh, incompleted subdivision was a turnaround. It was not completed by the developer. Uh, he uh, since passed away. And nobody has stepped up to to uh, re, uh, finish this subdivision. So, in order for the uh, township, as indicated, in order to take it over as a road, and we could, and the engineer office could accept it, then we'd have to have a turnaround put in. That's where we're at. Right. The cost was uh, stated yesterday, an estimate from our office, at sixty-one hundred dollars. And there was talk about splitting this fee up or the cost and getting this uh, accomplished. So. Um, this is what we stand right today. Okay. So um, what we're going to do um, is uh, actually postpone this until May second. Is that? Yeah, but if there's any residents, we have to still. Go we still have to go through all that. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to get through this. <laughs> <so we can laughs> get, if we're just going to, okay. we're just going to adjourn it for comment till next time. We can do that. Can we? Yeah. Do I have to notify everybody again if they're not? No. Okay. They were told to be here, so we will just okay. let them know. Yeah. Okay. So, do I have a second? Yes. So we are going to hear this on May second. Correct. Okay. Aye. Thank Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Can Can I just restate that so it's very clear to anybody yes. that's here, yes. because of the president being here, and because of the fact that. Uh, uh, there's going to be continued negotiations here w among the parties to see if they can come up with a agreed solution of this. The mm -hmm. actual testimony regarding this project is being continued to May 2nd at, at uh, 9.30. Well, I think so. Okay, so um, let's do 9.45. Okay. So. So the hearing is being continued to May 2nd at 9.45, at which time we will hear testimony. There will be no further notice to the landowners or uh, any other official notice regarding this. So anybody right. that wants to testify that's here today needs to return on May 2nd at 9.45. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, motion to close the public hearing? Or no, we don't close it, do we? Nope. No. Sorry. Motion to adjourn. Second. Skowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. We're adjourned.
This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.